everyone in this video i'm going to discuss one part in a book entitled literary theory written by terry eagleton this part is the introduction part which is an essay entitled what is literature in this part there will be some different definitions that i'm going to discuss here the first one is that literature as an imaginative writing in the sense of fiction and then the second one it is written in peculiar ways and the last one that literature is a non-pragmatic discourse i'm going to explore more out of these three definitions including the problems in which this definition can be accepted or not i will conclude it at the end of this presentation now let's see the first definition the first definition that can be found in the first page of this essay refers literature as an imaginative writing which is not literally true. When we elaborate further on imaginative writing, what comes in our mind is that the product of literature is an imagination. So we create something in our mind. It means that it cannot be based on fact because it's the product of our creation, of our imagination. It is a fiction instead or the story which is unreal. So what are the problems related to this first definition? The first problem is that some historical writings and autobiography are considered as literature. Let's say Clarendon's History of the Rebellion and Bunyan's Spiritual Autobiography. These kinds of writing were real and based on reliable facts. So it's a question, isn't it? Second problem, some writings are also written based on the writer's imagination. So these writings belong also to the imaginative one, let's say like comic books, TV series, cartoon, etc. Are they literature? These are the problems of this first definition. Okay, now we move on to the next definition. Alright, so the next definitions of literature deals with the use of language in peculiar ways. So literature is a peculiar ways of using language. What does it mean by peculiar ways? As stated by the formalists, literature is created by an organized violence committed on ordinary speech. What does it mean? Well, the organized here is similar to structure or reordered. The violence refers that it is against the norms or it is against the rules of the language. While the ordinary speech is the everyday language or it is the language which is commonly used in regular writings. So, in other easier way, the organized violence committed on ordinary speech can also mean that literature is the use of language which is structurally used against rules or norms. For example, imagine that you find someone who is saying, Most expected thou zip tightly thy uncooperative lips for the presence of silence. Wow, it's so uncommon, right? He actually means to say, Shut up. Yes, it means this long utterance is seldom found in our daily communications, but rather in literary writing. Thus, we can say that when language is used in peculiar ways, people need to think it over and over to sometimes interpret the meaning. Why? 
because the language in use is not based on its grammatical, semantic, and pragmatic functions. So, it is not easy to understand. The second conclusion so far is that the product of literature, which is called literary work, is a random combination of devices which contains functions on its own. The devices in literature are tools. This is the equipment, the requirements that is needed to make the literature. It is the formal literary elements like the sound, imagery, etc. While the functions or uses of these devices are to give the special effect which is estranging and defamiliarizing, meaning that it makes it sound or look different from the usual text. You feel strange and not familiar with it. Now, what are the problems that come from this second definition? First, to make unusual or uncommon writing is quite hard or difficult. It is constructed against the rules, yet it carries meaning. The second problem is that we also often find many kinds of writing are strange or in other words, ambiguous. Let's have one example here. We might find a notice in a mall saying Dogs must be carried on the escalator. This notice might have two meanings. First one is that uh, when your dog is with you, you cannot let it stand on the escalator, but you have to carry it with you. While the second meaning suggests that you cannot get into the escalator unless you carry a dog. Hmm, strange, isn't it? Well, these two are the problems of the definitions given by the formalist. And we are finally in the last one. The last definition attributed to literature is as a non-pragmatic discourse. What does non-pragmatic mean? First, to say that literature gives no direct purpose. It is different from any textbook or newspaper with their specific direct purpose. For example, English textbook is made to guide you in learning English based on certain level. So, its purpose is specific and direct, while literature, it's not. Since everyone can have their own interpretations on the literary work that they read or watch. The second meaning of non-pragmatic is that it reverses literature as a general issue by using a self-referential language. What does it mean by self-referential language? Let's have an illustration here. When talking about a certain woman or a lady, instead of focusing on the real descriptions or life of the woman, the focus of the talk is more on the way of talking about the woman so everybody may have different ways of talking and thus different interpretations on their own so it's not about the woman but it's on the way of talking about the woman so what is the problem surrounding this last definition one major problem is that literature cannot be defined objectively what can we say about that? It is not about what is written, but rather how it is interpreted when it is read. Thus, it is in the mind of the reader to interpret, meaning that different person may have their own criteria of deciding a literature. So that is the only problem for this last definition. Interesting, right? Okay, those are the explanations on these three definitions and their problems. Now we move on talking about some important terms related to the literature. There are four terms here that I'm going to discuss. The first one is the literary language. Literary language is the language used in literature with its uniqueness that makes it special. As suggested by the formalists previously, 
It contains devices or elements that make it different from the other kinds of language use, especially the ordinary one. Next is literariness. Literariness is a property or a standard given to the literary works. This is how we address whether a certain writing belongs to literature or not. Again, the tools of literary elements help enhancing the atmosphere of the literariness. Now, this literariness will be related to the next term that we are going to discuss, which is the value judgment. The judgment is the ability to measure the literariness of a work. So this is the ability on judging or interpreting a kind of writing as literature or not. And the last one is the ideology in literature. It covers the ideas of protesting the social structure in real life. It means that these ideas is used to influence the readers on the social structure, of course by using a special kind of writing, which is literature. This is in line with the meaning of ideology in general, which is the ways in which what we say and believe connects with the power structure and power relations of the society we live in. Alright, now we come to the last part of this video, which is the conclusion. What can we conclude? based on those uh, definitions, the problems, and the terms that we have already discussed previously. First is that literature is imaginative, and then it expresses the thoughts and feelings in spatial way of words arrangements. It deals with the life experiences. It uses words in a powerful, evocative, and yet captivating manner. And lastly, it promotes recreation and revelations of hidden facts. So this is the conclusions. We cannot define literature with one single, narrow, specific definition. The definition of literature itself is open, so uh, we might have our own interpretation on how to define it in words. But luckily, it is rooted in our mind that we can differentiate the literature, the kind of writing in literary elements from the other kinds of writing. So let's solve our discussion on an essay by Terry Eagleton, What is Literature? Hope it helps. Thank you.